All right, this video is the notes lecture for angles of triangles. Uh, this week's lesson um, is all about uh, angle measures and the relationships between those angle measures, um, especially talking about the relationships of the angle measures of the interior and exterior of triangles. Uh, but before we get into the triangle stuff, we have to understand a few other types of angles um, and what their relationships are. So first off, uh, angles that are created by intersecting lines. So when we have two lines that cross, any two lines or any two lines that meet or come together, um, they're going to create a series of angles around um, those two intersecting lines. And so the two types of angles that they create, there are adjacent, okay, which the word adjacent means like next to. Um, so when we describe these types of angles, you'll see why they're called adjacent angles. But uh, adjacent angles are two angles that are separated by a single line. So there's just one line in between um, the two different angles. And the two angles will add then to make a larger angle. So um, when two adjacent angles make a straight line, then they add up to make 180 degrees. Um, if a circle has 360 degrees total, if I make any straight line that goes through that, um, if it's 360 all the way around for the entire circle, that means that one half would be 180, the other half would, uh, other half, excuse me, would be another 180. So 180 degrees on each side, so that's why we say that a straight line uh, makes up 180 degrees. So if I have two adjacent angles and they make up a straight line, then each of those angles added together is going to make 180 degrees. The other type of angles that we're going to have that are get created in that are vertical angles. And so in vertical angles, the two angles are congruent. No, excuse me. Not congruent here. <laughs> the two angles are across is the word we're going for or on opposite sides of the two intersecting lines. Vertical angles are congruent. Here's where that word goes. Which means that they're going to be the same or they're going to be equal. Okay, so once the, the two lines make an intersection, like up here, um, this line, or sorry, sorry, this angle and this angle would be congruent. Uh, and they would be vertical angles because they are across the intersection from one another. So separated by a single line, we call those adjacent, across the intersection, those are vertical angles. So uh, we're going to identify the uh, vertical angles, the adjacent and vertical angles in the following diagram. So here we have a column for the adjacent angles. So one pair of adjacent angles I have here by the intersecting of lines A and B are angles 1 and 2. Because angles 1 and 2 are just separated by this single line here. 2 and 3 so angle 2 and angle 3 are also a set of adjacent angles. They're separated by just this one line here. So that would be this angle here and that angle there. Um, angles 3 and 4. And then angles 4 back to 1. Okay. So... In total, with two intersecting lines, we get four pairs of adjacent angles. One and two, two and three, three and four, four and one um, would all be pairs of adjacent angles. And again, since they those two angles each add to make a straight line here, those two angles would add to make 180 degrees. Um, adjacent angles don't have to add to make 180. Um, they can add to make other uh, angle amounts, but if together those two angles make a single straight line, uh, when added together, then they're going to add to make 180 degrees. Okay, for vertical angles, so we have actually two, as you can see here, pairs of vertical angles. So one and three are across the intersection or on opposite sides of the intersection from each other. So that would be a pair of vertical angles. And that means that their two angle measures are going to be exactly the same. They're going to be equal. Uh, angles two and four. are the other pair of vertical angles here. And they would be equal in measure. Okay. In the example, so find the measure of each angle in the diagram. And so here we know that the measure of angle 2 is 57. 
So that means this angle here is 57. My dog just did a flyby on us. He's searching for some food or water or something. <laughs> so if you're hearing the clicking noise in the background, uh, if you're hearing a kid in the background, that's Brindley. She's outside playing with her mom right now. So <laughs> you can hear them in the background. But anyways, back to this. So if we know that angle 2 is 57 degrees and the whole thing makes up this straight line, that means together angles 1 and 2 make up 180 degrees. So I could write that angle 1 plus angle 2, in this case, is 57 degrees, is equal to a total of 180 degrees. And now I can solve this like an equation. So I can just subtract 57 degrees from both sides. And I'm going to find that angle 1 is equal to... hundred and twenty three degrees okay in number two this time we have a pair of vertical angles so one and two now are vertical angles and so I'm told that uh, the measure of angle one is 38 so this is 38 degrees over here and since angle two is a vertical angle it's an across from the the intersection there that means that it's equal to it so this side over here this angle if they're congruent they're equal and so that means that angle 1 is equal to angle 2 for this one. And so therefore, if angle 1 is 38 degrees, that means the measure of angle 2 is also 38 degrees. So 38 degrees on this side. Now going back over here, so this over here was 123 degrees. Okay? Which going back to number 1, that makes sense because this is shown as a larger angle. And so if this is 57 degrees over here, we would ex expect the other side to be uh, larger because it makes a larger angle on that side. Over here, you can see the angles are the same on each side, and so that's why they're going to also show that they're going to be equal. can't always necessarily assume that by the diagram. Sometimes the diagrams aren't drawn to scale, but um, we do want to make sure that we're, we're using the, the properties that we have now for these. Okay, so the, uh, in number three, we've got the measure of angle five, which would be this angle here, is 22 degrees. Measure of angle 6 is the one that we don't know. And then over here, we have another angle. Um, and the little box, hopefully we remember that that equals 90 degrees. We just talked about right triangles not too long ago, a couple weeks back. So um, remember, 90 degree angles have to show up in those right triangles. And so we always put the little box to, to, to show that. So if that shows up in the worksheets for this week, again, remember the little box um, results in 90 degrees. So uh, that means that if it's 90 degrees on this side, over here on this side, this is going to be a total of 90 degrees as well. So this time, angles 5 and 6 are going to add to make uh, 90 degrees. So it would be 22 plus angle 6, this time will equal 90 degrees. And if I subtract 22 from both sides, I find that angle 6 is equal to 90 minus 22, which is 68. Okay. So that's how we can use adjacent and vertical angles to be able to find unknown angles in an intersection. Over here for number one, in the column question, it says to identify e the type of angles being shown in each. So in this first one, we have two lines that are intersecting. We have angles three and four that are on opposite sides. And so as we just uh, defined in the other part of the notes, that means that these would be vertical angles. Okay. Angles 9 and 10 are separated by a single line. They would make up this larger angle right here. Um, this little piece over here is just kind of extra to the two angles that are being shown. But since they're separated by a single line like this, uh, that makes them adjacent. Down here for the last one, 11 and 12. So this is angle 11, angle 12 here. Together, they make up this straight line, but once again, just separated by a single line. So they're not across an intersection. They're just separated by a single line in the intersection. And so, again, these would be adjacent. Okay. Now to talk about interior angles of triangles. So the angles on the inside of a polygon, which again is just a fancy word for a shape or a figure, are called interior angles. A triangle has three interior angles, 
hence its name, right? The word tri means three, and so uh, tri triangle comes from the fact that it has three interior angles, uh, as shown below. So kind of shown in red here, we've got one, two, three interior angles on the inside of a triangle. The interior angles of a triangle always add up to make 180 degrees. Um, there's kind of a way that you can show this, you can practice this. Um, if you draw a triangle on paper, so if you draw any random triangle, and then you cut out the three angles that make up that triangle. So if you were to like make a cut along lines like that, if you then place the three angles Uh, the pieces of paper, that is, cut the, the three cutouts, what you're going to find is that, like, if this was one, two, and three, it, by placing them together and rearranging them, you're going to get angles one, two, and three, the vertices of that, to line up to make a straight line like this. And as we just said on the other side, we know that a straight line has 180 degrees, so the three angles in the triangle um, also split to make 180 degrees. Okay? So if they add to make 180 degrees, that means in this diagram, if we call those three interior angles X, Y, and Z, then X, Y, and Z are going to always add to make 180 degrees when it comes to a triangle. So using that then, if we need to find the value of X in this case or the, a missing angle that's inside of the, of the triangle, we can write a little equation. So if I'm trying to find angle X here, what I could say is that X plus 32 plus 48 is equal to 180 degrees. I can then add those two together, like terms, and here I get x plus 80 equals 180. I can subtract then the 80 from both sides, and that's going to give me that x is equal to 100 degrees here, or x is equal to 100. The um, degree marks put on the x there, so um, I could just leave it as x equals 100. Okay, and number two, again, remember the little box here? That represents 90 degrees there. My other angles, I have x plus 28, and I have x. So if I add all those together, the 90 plus x plus 28 is this representing this entire angle up here, plus x, all three of those have to add to make 180. So if I combine my like terms then, I've got a couple of constants. I have a couple of x's that I could put together, so it's going to make 2x plus 118. And now I've got a two-step equation to solve here in this one. So move that first. Okay, and then divide by 2, which will give me x is equal to 31. Okay. Now, something to point out about um, x being equal to 31, up here in the diagram, this angle was equal to x. So that means that its measure is actually 31 degrees. The measure of that angle would be 31 degrees because it's just represented by x. This one over here, though, is not going to be 31 degrees because this angle is represented by x plus 28. So if I actually wanted to find the measure of that angle, I would actually have to take my 31 that I have as the value for x now and add 28 to that. And so all in total, that would give me 59 degrees. So this angle up here would be a total of 59 degrees. Okay, so pay attention on the worksheet. Um, if it's asking for just to find the value of x or if it's asking to find the value of x and then use that to find the angle measure because if you're finding the actual angle measure, you need to um, use the expressions that are given for that. Okay, column question number two over here. An equilateral triangle has three congruent sides and angles. What is the measure of the angles in an equilateral triangle? Well, in an equilateral triangle, these three sides are all equal, but that means that these three angles are all equal. So if I use a variable like x to represent those, they're all going to be the same, so they can all be represented by just x. That means that if I add those three together, it's going to equal 180 degrees. 
which means combining all of my x's, I have 3x then equals 180. And then now if I solve and I divide by 3 to both sides, x is going to equal 60 degrees. So that tells me that the measure of each of the angles in an equilateral triangle would be 60 degrees for each. And that'll hold true for any equilateral triangle. No matter what the side length is, um, if they're all the three the same, uh, the angle measures on the inside will always be 60 degrees for each of them. Okay, so that's interior angles. Next, we're going to talk about exterior angles. So the exterior angles are formed when the sides of the triangle are extended beyond the outside of the triangle. The exterior angles are always adjacent uh, to the interior angles. So remember, adjacent angles we talked about on the first page. And so if you look down here, um, if this is an interior angle here that I've just drawn, then one line across from that here is an exterior angle. Notice that there are two of them, right, uh, for every one single interior angle. So exterior angles can be formed uh, for each, so that would be two, as we just stated, exterior angles that can be formed for each interior angle. Okay, so this one interior angle has two adjacent exterior angles. This interior angle has two adjacent exterior angles. This interior angle has two adjacent exterior angles. So the measure of the exterior angles of a triangle will always be equal to the sum of the measures of the two non-adjacent interior angles. Okay, so non-adjacent means that for an exterior angle, take Z here, notice that there we've only drawn one here. If I were to extend this line out, it would make another exterior angle over here. But each pair of exterior angles are actually going to be equal, right? And the reason that is, is what we showed on the first page, they actually make vertical angles with one another. And so that's why they're going to end up being equal there. So as it shows here, Z is going to be equal to X plus Y. So Z is this exterior angle out here. It would be equal to the sum of the two non-adjacent interior angles. So X and Y are the non-adjacent interior angles. This would be the interior angle that's adjacent to the exterior angle. So I don't include this one. I add these two together. If I knew what that was, then I could just, since this makes a straight line here, I could subtract this from 180, and it would tell me what Z is as well. Okay, but the, um, and that's the reason, that's the proof of the theorem, uh, is that as well. So finding the value of each variable down here, if we have 36 as this angle here, that's an interior angle. 72 is also an interior angle here. And if we're looking for X to be here, well, that's, a non-adjacent exterior angle to these two. So these are the two non-adjacent interior angles. So that would mean that if I added those together, oops, let's try that again, x is going to be equal to the sum of those two. So I'm going to take uh, and add my two non-adjacent inter uh, interior angles, yes, and uh, that'll give me my exterior angle. So 36 plus 72 is going to equal 108. So 108 or 108 degrees for the measure of, of angle X there. Over here, we have an exterior angle that has 2A as it's uh, being shown with. The two non-adjacent interior angles are 80 and A minus 5. So again, adding these two together will equal that. So writing an equation that shows that, 80 plus A minus 5 is equal to 2A. Now, here the parentheses, I, I wrote it with it around it, but really the parentheses don't have a meaning here that I, I need to keep them for any reason uh, because really there would just be a positive 1 out here to distribute in, and if we did that, it's not going to change anything. So this is the same as just A minus 5 without the parentheses. And now, if I solve this, well, these are a set of like terms that I can combine together. Move the A term to the other side. I don't know if you guys can hear the uh, Frozen soundtrack being played outside there. Feel free to, free to sing along there with, uh, with Brindley. <laughs> but what I found was that uh, 85 degrees is going to be the measure of angle A, or is going to be the, the, uh, is going to be the 
value for the variable of a. Now, there's no actual measure of, uh, there's no angle a up here. There's an angle 2a. So remember, in order to actually find this angle, I'm going to actually have to multiply 2 times 85, which gives us 170 degrees. Okay, so this angle here is actually 170 degrees. This one would be a minus 8 minus 5, excuse me. So if a is 85, then that's going to be 80 then when I subtract. So 80 degrees here for this angle. Okay, number three. What are the measures of all of the exterior angles of this triangle? Well, notice the exterior angles aren't going to be shown or drawn here. So in order to actually see those, I'd have to ex extend these lines out. Okay. So um, two ways I can find this. If I'm looking maybe for this exterior angle here first, remember to find that. I'm going to add together the two non-adjacents. Or the fact that this straight line would be made up of that angle and this angle, I can take 180 degrees and subtract away the 60 to find out how much is left for that side. But either way, it should give me the same answer here. So let's see. If I do 65 plus 55, that gives me 120. And if I took 180 and subtracted 60, that would also give me 120. So now remember that across from there is another uh, exterior angle. But since these are vertical angles to one another, it's also going to be 120 degrees there as well. So I don't have to make another calculation for that. Okay, for these angles up here that are exterior angles, well, that would be adding together the 60 and the 55 that are the two non-adjacent angles. Oops. Yeah, 60 and 55. So 115 degrees for each of those. And then we have these two angles here left uh, that are exterior angles. So that would be 60 and 65 to make 125. Okay, and those would be all of the exterior angles. Uh, typically in diagrams uh, for exterior angles, you're going to see it more like these ones that you saw over here, where they, even though it has two exterior angles, it's only going to show you just one of them. Uh, but just remember that there really are two exterior angles for every one interior angle uh, of a triangle. Okay, to the conclusions now. So when two lines cross or intersect, how many total angles are formed? Well, if I think about it... There's two lines that are crossed. Sound effects are necessary. Make sure you make those when you draw it yourself. I've got one, two, three, four total angles here. How many pairs of adjacent angles are formed? Well, remember, these would be adjacent, those would be adjacent, these would be adjacent, and those would be adjacent. So just separated by one line for adjacent. So that means we get four pairs of adjacent angles. And how many pairs of vertical angles are formed? Well, this one and this one would be... Um, Vertical angles, and then technically I should be adding another line to our curves there, like we did last week when we were doing congruent and similar figures and drawing the, the angle measures, the, the uh, congruent angles that were in those. So these two would be congruent, those two would be congruent, so you get two pairs of vertical angles. Number two, in every triangle there are three interior angles, and... If every interior angle has two exterior angles that go with it, that would mean that there are a total of six exterior angles. It says to use the variable shown in the triangle to write equations to prove why an exterior angle is equal to the sum of the two non-adjacent angles. Okay, so notice in this one we've got uh, W and Z uh, that are adjacent angles, but W is an interior, Z is an exterior, and then X and Y are the other two um, interior angles, the non-adjacent interior angles. So thinking about things that I could write here, well, one thing that we proved was that the three interior angles, that'd be X, Y, and oops, not Z, that'd be W. We said that the interior angles always add to make 180 degrees, so those three would add to make 180. Um, we also know that um, W and Z would add to make 180 because they're adjacent, so W plus Z equals 180 degrees, okay? And then the other thing that we proved, or that we were shown, was that Z, as an angle, is equal to X plus Y. So, um, the idea is, why do these two, or what we're trying to prove here, why do these two show that this is true? is what we're trying to prove. 
So notice that these are both equal to 180 degrees. And if they're both equal to 180 degrees, remember like when we did systems of equations, if the two were equal on this side, then I could set the other two sides of the equation equal to each other. So that means that these are equal to one another as well, because if they both equal 180, then they are equal. And if I write that, x plus y plus w is equal to w plus z, that would be the equation I get when I set these two sides of the equation equal to each other. And then notice that I have w on both sides, and so if I were to subtract w from each side, it's going to eliminate the w's, and what does that show? Well, that proves that x plus y would indeed equal z. And so it proves this right here, because now these two are the same thing, just written on opposite sides, uh, but they're the same equation. Okay, so that proves as to why the exterior angle is equal to the sum of the two non-adjacent interior angles. Now, using all of that, we're going to find the measure of angles 1 through 4 here. So starting that off, I've got 1 and 2 that I can use the fact that they are adjacent angles with their exterior angle to be able to find uh, what they're equal to. So angle 1 plus 92 would have to equal 180 degrees. And if I subtract 92 from both sides, then I find that angle 1 is equal to 88 degrees. Okay. And that means that uh, I can also do the same for angle 2. So angle 2 plus 123 equals 180. Subtract 123. And so 180 minus 123 equals 57. Yeah. Not yet. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Brittany's ready to come back in. Okay. And now there's two, uh, two ways that I could find angles 3 and 4. So I would know that these two interior angles have to add together to make that exterior. Um, or I can say that uh, these two angles uh, plus that, plus number 3, would have to add to make 180 to be able to find that one. So let's write those two equations. Uh, angle 3 plus 88 plus 57 would have to equal 180. But also angle 4 is going to be equal to the sum of angle 1, which is 88, plus angle 2, which is 57, which means that angle 4 is going to be 145 degrees. Angle 3, then, if I add 88 and 57, well, I just did that a second ago. It's going to make 145. Then now subtracting that from that gives me a final angle here. Angle 3 is going to be 35 degrees. Okay? So using all those properties and principles, adjacent angles, and um, then the interior angle theorem and the exterior angle theorem, and it shows it all. Okay, so finally now, a summary of all of that. So in our summary, we have a table here. So it says to complete the following table, we're going to first sketch an example, so to show a pair of adjacent angles. So remember, I can have adjacent angles being shown like this. Call it 1 and 2. Um, or if the lines go all the way through, I get angles 1 and 2 like that. Or I could have angles 3 and 4 down here that would be adjacent to each other. Um, but again, just across one single line there. And we know that uh, adjacent angles, um, they add to make a bigger angle. In this case, angle 1 plus angle 2 would add to make 180 degrees because they add to make a straight line. Okay, but um, that's not necessarily always the case. They have to add to make 180. They just add to make the sum of the larger angle. Okay, vertical angles, you do have to have a full intersection happen there. And so remember, vertical angles across from each other like that. So across the intersection, 
And we know that vertical angles are always equal to one another. That's the association we know. So angle one is equal to angle two in vertical angles. And then for interior angles of triangles, if I draw a triangle, interior angles of x, y, and z, well, I know that x plus y plus z equals 180 degrees. So all three interior angles add to make 180. And then make my triangle, throw on an exterior angle. So now if the exterior angle is z, we know that z is equal to x plus y because the exterior angle is equal to the sum of the two non-adjacent interior angles. Okay, so that's the notes on angles of triangles. Hopefully that gives you enough information to be able to go uh, do the next two worksheets, so adjacent and vertical angles, and the um, angle or interior and exterior angles of triangles. Okay, email me or let me know if you have any questions about those, um, and then again we'll do a Google Meet on Wednesday to ask specific questions.